Hear, O Israel. Again, we are recipients of another blessing from God. Every day, we open our eyes still in control of ourselves is a gift from God. Every meal we digest is a gift from God. Every illness we overcome is a gift from God. Therefore, a single day does not pass wherein we do not have an opportunity to thank God for his goodness. And so as we gather here today to come close to the Bible again, we gather in a spirit of thankfulness, in a spirit of praise, and in a spirit to listen to the word of God that we might first adapt it to our lives. And then our light may shine much brighter in this world. We do this by way of singing, reading of the scripture, prayer, and then we rally around this word of God. This word that's so very, very important, so rich, so rich in information, so rich in pleasures. And with these words, we are now at worship again as God has given us the right. We are at worship.
Hello, church family. Uh, hello to all of God's people. I was going to re read one scripture I thought was appropriate in reference to what's going on in the world, but my spirit led me to Psalm 67. Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and guide the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. I have read Psalm 67. May the Lord have a blessing of the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his holy and righteous word. Amen. Good evening, church family. Let's bow our heads in prayer to an all-wise God. It's once again your children have gathered together this evening to give you all the glory, honor, and praise in song, scripture, and in prayer. And in the word from above through our pastor. We're so thankful, Father, to once again be in the house of worship that we can continue to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Father, the world is in chaos right now. But yet, once again, it is a pleasure to still be in the house of the Lord to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Evil and wickedness are all around us, but we know that your protection is a fence around us so that we can continue to do what you would have us to do. To bless us with, your, with health and strength to carry on, to be able to say thank you each and every morning when we rise, to say thank you as we go through the day and to be able to say thank you at the end of the day as you prepare us for a good night's sleep. Father, we ask a special blessing upon the sick and the shut-in. COVID has once again raised its ugly head, but yet, Father, it's you that has control over everything. And we know, Lord, that one day, this too shall pass. Yeah. We continue to ask a special blessing upon our pastor as he shall stand before us this evening, giving us words of encouragement, yes, words of inspiration, and words that will just touch us yeah. so that we can touch someone else mm -hmm. and to be able to lift them up. Father, we just ask that those days when we seem to be less than our best, that you will continue to just strengthen us, Father. S help us to be the children that you would like for us to be. To be able to do those things that you called us to do. And Father, we just pray, not only for the sick and the shut-in, but for those families who have lost loved ones. And we pray, Father, for the loved ones of the young lady that lost her life this morning in the school bus accident. We don't know what all went on, Father, but we know that you're in control and that everything will work out just right. So, Father, continue to bless us and keep us this evening. Lift us up as we continue to lift you up. For it is in the name of our Lord and Savior our Redeemer and our soon returning King that we offer this prayer 
And all of God's children said, Amen. come now to be involved in another experience yeah. in the word of God. We have been talking about glorification. 
but it's impossible to talk about glorification without spending some time talking about the body because the body is involved, greatly involved in glorification. And so we focus upon the words found in this passage of scripture in 1 Corinthians, in the 15th chapter, verse 35. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Paul had mentioned the resurrection to the Corinthians. And since the resurrection was an experience that was brand new in human nature, one of the questions that arose was concerning the body. How are the dead raised? If you're going to talk about glorification, you need an answer to that question. How are the dead raised? And what kind of body do they come? In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, the Christians who lived at that time had an advantage over us. And Paul points that up in the early verses in that chapter. He reminds the readers that at the date of his letter, there were many Christians still alive who had been with Jesus during the 40 days between his resurrection and his ascension to the Father. Paul anticipates questions that will be asked by the readers of his letter, such as, how literal are we supposed to take the life to come? How personally do we share in it? What will we look like Having listened to these questions, Paul sets down what we have before us in our Bibles as verses 35 to 53. The questions that were asked boiled down to two. How are the dead raised? And with what body do they come? Let us begin with the first question. How are the dead raised? Paul's answer is not a scientific description of the process involved. Don't expect a scientific description of all of this because faith enters into it greatly. We should remind ourselves often that the reason the Bible does not talk like a scientific textbook it's not that God does not know science. It means that God knows so much more than any generation of scientific men that communicates is a problem. He knows so much more than we do so that it becomes a problem. Having a nuclear physics on the faculty of First Virginia Avenue Baptist Church over a kindergarten class. <laughs> How many of you see that? <laughs> Putting God in this situation and we are like little children. Yeah. You have the same situation that we would have today in one of our classes. God's word discusses creation and salvation and resurrection in very simple terms because you and I are just not yet smart enough or matured enough to go any deeper. 
The question how are the dead raised is concerned with the reasonableness of the resurrection concept. It is an approach very much like the one Nicodemus made in his interview with Jesus, who said that the only way you can enter in the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Nicodemus said, how? And so after Paul had preached to the Corinthians, some of them had the same question, how? Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again when he's old? And such is the stumbling block for most of us when the New Testament talks as it does of the life after death. Wouldn't you like to know more? Go on and answer me. Wouldn't you like to know so much more about life after death and the glorified body? But the resurrection is not unnatural at all. Take a simple illustration from nature itself. Now I want you to consider a seed. Observe the life cycle of a seed. A seed appears on a plant as a part of the blossom. Is that right or wrong? But, but, but it doesn't look like a seed, does it? It's part of a blossom. The seed's origin is a bloom, a flower, part of another body. Am I right or wrong? It ripens and dries up and drops to the ground and is buried. And its existence as a seed terminates when you put it in the ground. Because the burial is the first stage of a seed's new birth. No longer to be a seed, but as a plant. Are you getting the illustration of the resurrection? It appears first as a blossom. It ripens. In other words, the blossom of the bloom dies. And it drops to the ground and is buried by nature. And as soon as it drops in the ground, its nature as a seed comes to an end. Because the next thing, it sprouts life. Right or wrong? We commend Paul for this excellent illustration. What looks like the end when we lay it into a casket, our Lord into a grave, may be the opening of the doorway to a marvelous new dimension of existence. When you throw a seed into the ground, you open the doorway for the seed to have another existence. And Paul is saying, on the way to glorification, you may have to put the seed in the ground. But when the seed sprouts, it's on its way to another existence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put an apple seed in the ground. When it sprouts, it's on its way to another existence. A real pretty shiny apple. The burial is the first stage of its new birth. 
no longer to be a seed, but now it becomes a plant of wheat of some other grain. We commend Paul for this illustration. This is Paul's seed. It takes considerable imagination, even in this world, to conceive of a body prepared for us beyond which is just as real, yet as different in quality as a plant from a seed. But by looking at the seed plant progression of that of a caterpillar to a butterfly, we are encouraged to concede that our bodies might actually be improved on in the state of eternity. A caterpillar is an ugly little creature. I don't know of anybody that collects caterpillars, but a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. And you've never seen two butterflies look alike. People collect butterflies, but nobody wants to collect a caterpillar. So, how shall the bodies come? It shall be a body somewhat like ours, but not exactly like ours. How shall the dead be raised? In what body shall they come? It's a body something like this one, but not exactly like this one. It's a body without limitations. For an example, you take an apple seed. That's all it is. But in that apple seed, there is the power and the movement to be put in the ground and to burst through the surface of the soil as a plant and to grow into a tree and bring forth apples. And who would ever have thought of that by looking at an apple seed? Let us consider another suggestion from Paul's analogy. That is the reasonableness of believing in the persistence of our personal identity. He says to every seed, its own body. An apple seed has an apple seed's body. An orange has an orange seed's body. And an apple tree never has an orange body. And an orange tree's body never has an apple body. Am I making sense? Each one has their own Identity. You got that? Yeah. Each body has its own identity. So in the glorified body, you're going to have your own identity somewhat. I'm saying, in the, in the glorified body, there's going to be something like you in that glorified body that will enable you to be known. Mm-hmm. May I make that simple? When I die and my body is glorified, there's going to be something in that glory that enables you to identify that this is Charles Duncan. Come on. This is good. Each one has its own identity. Even twins have their own identity. And glorification does not rob you of your identity. Mm, mm, mm. 
This is Paul's way of expressing it. When death comes, we do not just get lost in the crowd. There's a certain comfort at times in losing oneself in a crowd. When we're tired of taking responsibility or hearing the phone ring, when we have made an embarrassing mistake or some other illegal act, for a while we would prefer not to be picked out by a spotlight or to hear our name mentioned over the public address system. Normally, though, we enjoy the sound of our own names. Normally, we would like to think of ourselves as individuals, not just a wheel in cosmic machinery. And normally, when we consider the life to come, we favor thinking of ourselves as plainly recognizable to ourselves and to others. In other words, in glorification, if you're glorified and I'm glorified, there's something in each one of us that's going to allow me to know you and you to know me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God made each one of us different. And yet the material that he uses is the same material he used in every one of us. But we're different. Amen. Twins may look alike, but twins are not like each other. Hallelujah, Brother Duncan. Yes, twins may look alike, but one twin might have a husband who the other twin would, not, would never have. We have our own identity. When we lose someone that's dear to us, we do not find it pleasant to imagine he or she depersonalized and dissolved into nothing. Human personality calls for a body of some sort, visible and material for its self-expression. And don't we have the concept of seeing some of our relatives who died in the Lord. Don't you want to see Abraham? Isaac? If we're not going to know each other, we all going to be strangers when we get to heaven. And we'll spend our days trying to introduce ourselves to one another. We have been talking about a very real and important question. Will we persist as individuals in spite of the brand new and glorified bodies. Yes, we will. I'm still going to be Charles Duncan. And you will know me as Charles Duncan. But I will not be the Charles Duncan that you knew on earth. Hmm. Well, Brother Duncan, how does that work? Now you ask me a question I can't answer. And one that God has not answered for us. The New Testament answer is, yes, we will be glorified. But yes, we will be the same identity that we have. God does not think merely in terms of masses. God thinks of particles. God didn't just make a whole bunch of folks. He made individuals with every different personality. Hallelujah. And that personality is you. And in the glorification, you have that same personality, but not the same personality. God does not deal in stereotypes. He enjoys variety. If you don't believe me, look at the snowflakes. A hundred million of them will fall, but I, there's not two of them that's alike. Look at the animals. Look at the birds, the insects, and the fishes. There are no duplicates. To every seed, its own body. How are the dead raised? How can such a thing be? We have considered Paul's answer. 
Next week, we will talk about with what body do we come. Glorification. We're not going to get lost in eternity. I'm going to be up there. I know it. And when I see you, I'm going to know you. And you're going to know me. But I will not be the Charles Duncan you knew on earth. And you will not be the same person you were on earth. And that's how the dead shall be raised. And with what body will they come? Now, I know this is, requires a whole lot of thinking. But there are certain things that we ought to know right now that's absolutely truth. That is, if God takes us to heaven like we are right now, how can heaven be the place that it is? Common sense will tell you. If we go to heaven just like we are, it will not be long before heaven will be just like the earth that we left. Common sense will tell you, we cannot, and that's why Paul says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But when we have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, we are guaranteed that when we die, we shall be glorified and we shall have another home and we shall live in a, in a glorious situation. And now, brothers and sisters, let's have our closing song.
have now come just about to the end of another day. Has it been a good day? Yes, sir. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. We did not get everything we hoped for today. The world did not go the way we would like for it to go. But we all still have had a good day. We were able to plant our feet one more time on the holy ground upon which this church stands. And soon we will approach the lying down mode of our existence. We'll take off these garments, we'll lie upon our bed and we'll close our eyes. And for several hours, unknown by us, our angel will be standing by our bed. And when morning comes, that angel will just shake us and we'll open our eyes and we're ready to face the problems of the coming Wednesday. But God gives us strength each and every step of the way. And we look and glorify his name. Eternal God, we pray that you will continue to bless this world. It needs blessings. It needs help. Continue to give us the strength to supply the help we can. And the help we can supply is to let our light shine. Soon we will lie down to sleep. Give us a good night's sleep. Yes. Please wake us. Yes, Lord. So we can be the part of another day. Yes. And we will give you glory. Yes, Lord. Because you and you alone are worthy of glory. Yes, Lord. So we say thank you for another good day. And we look forward to a better day tomorrow. The grace of God. The love of Jesus Christ. And the communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide in you all. And the church said. Let the church say, let the church say, Amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church say, Amen. Let the church say, let the church God has spoken. God has spoken.